just an incredible story of survival. Michelle, I gotta tell you, uh, you know, I went into his room and I saw him lying there on his hospital bed. And even in the condition that he was in, he looked to be a very strong, very powerful person. I gotta tell you, uh, I felt weak standing next to him, even though he was the one injured in the hospital blast. He just had such tremendous heart and such tremendous spirit. He looked really well to have uh, lived through what he lived through over the last several days. Well, Vlad, does, does he remember anything about the moments right before the blast? Michelle, it's incredible. He said to me that uh, in the day before the attacks, he and a friend were talking, and they were talking about karma, and they were talking about destiny and fate. Uh, and he says that uh, normally where the international uh, uh, departures area is at the Brussels airport was in a different area from where it was uh, on Tuesday. In fact, it had moved over the last couple of weeks or the last couple of months, I guess. And uh, he said that if he had gone to the original area for departures, he would have escaped all of this. Um, but for whatever reason, he was there when the blast went off. And for whatever reason, um, he says that he does think a lot about why he survived and so many others didn't. He described the moments uh, in the minutes after the blast where he could hear the screams of people and you heard uh, the tremendous amount of blood everywhere. Um, and he does think about that a lot. And he said to me, um, but I'm just so happy. My, my children are gonna have a father and I'm here. Powerful. Well, his old ball coach, Greg Campy, tweeted his support for Sebastian after the attack. Has he spoken to him since? Uh, I don't know that he's spoken to him, but I do know that he's well aware that coach uh, has tweeted out uh, to pray for him. He also knows uh, that his former teammates um, are all rooting for him. In fact, at one point, uh, he jokingly said to me, uh, you know, how do they know about all of this? And he goes, is it the picture? And he's and he was sort of laughing about it. But, you know, it's not a funny picture. It's, mm -hmm. it's you know, a fairly gruesome picture that people have seen splashed across uh, newspapers all around the world. And he just sort of said, it must be the picture, right? And I said, it's more than the picture. It's they I, clearly they love you and they care about you and they want you to get well. Um, and uh, he said, well, you know, Coach Campy is an incredible, phenomenal individual. And, uh, uh, you know, he loves him right back. Any idea when he'll be out? He'll be able to see doctors his family? Doctors are not sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, doctors aren't very sure as to when that might happen. Uh, he lost a lot of blood. Um, you know, uh, at one point he said to me that, you know, he, when he looked down and he saw that he almost didn't have any legs, um, it, it was the moment that he started to go numb. He started to feel himself go numb. Uh, so he's on the road to recovery. He looks healthy and strong, but uh, it's probably a long road ahead. But, I, but one thing, Michelle, and we hope to be able to do this, um, he did say to me, Vlad, when I'm feeling better, uh, you got to come back and talk to me. We'll do another story. So I'm looking oh, forward good. to that. Good. Glad. Well, thank you. We'll see you in just a few minutes.